This is an engraving done on metal. We are going to talk about today, we're going to talk about art, cars and motorcycles with our special guest, my good friend, Hello. Luis Rodriguez. Hello everybody. <laughs> so uh, that's a beautiful car, man. Um, Thank you. When did you get this? I got this car a couple months ago. I went all the way to Redding, California, which is almost uh, the border, to, and I drove it back. Oh. This is a... It's a 1934 Ford Coupe. It's a hot rod. <laughs> hot rod. And, and you can go fast on this, right? Yeah, I can drive 100 miles an hour on the freeway if I want to without getting caught. Wow. Yeah, and I've done it, but not for the record. <laughs> And, and and it's not like uh, it's not hesitating. It's not noisy. The, the engine is it's it's smooth. It's it's like perfect condition. Yeah, I fixed the car. I uh, changed the transmission, and I did some upgrades to the motor. Uh, it's a 302 four motor um, with an automatic forward drive transmission. It runs really good. So the car is loud because of the exhaust. It's almost uh, sitting right behind you, and the uh, the cabin is kind of small, but it's, uh, other than that, I, I got my uh, sound system and I don't hit the engine and it's really good. Yeah, I was sitting inside uh, a minute ago and it's really comfortable. It's a two-seater, but very comfortable. And then I noticed a, a lot of these switches, like it says fan, um, wiper, and... Um, it's it's almost like a cockpit of an airplane. Pretty much, that's what I was. Uh, yeah, when I first got it, I got said, "Holy moly, I got a lot of switches here." I feel like <laughs> I was going in a plane, but it's a it's actually an old car. <laughs> so yeah, it's fun to drive. And you have another one similar. Uh -huh. Yes, I also have a 1930 uh, Ford Model A, and that one is in uh, original condition. It's re it runs really good. It has a Pinto motor on it, but I I have the original motor. That still runs, but with that motor, you can only go 30 miles per hour. So I'd rather have the Pinto. You can go 60, 65 on the freeway on that car. Yeah. Very nice. And, and these are called antique or These are historical? classic cars, but they're, they're uh, antiques right now. You know, the car, the other car is 92 years old, and this one is about 85, 86 years old. So they're, they're just nice old cars for people who like them. And uh, and you you have other cars too, right? Yes, I also have a three El Camino. I have a seventy two El Camino. I have a seventy three Super Sport El Camino, and I also have a seventy seven El Camino. Yeah. And uh, when did you start collecting the cars? Well, uh, you know, with the life was weird. I think for everybody, we just grow and we start my kids are growing, and uh, have more time for me, and I guess more money. And I just started buying things that I like because, you know, everybody has their own taste on things. And just when you channel, you find your own uh, uh, set of things that you like and what you want. You start going for them and you become, that, become, that becomes who you really are. You know, it becomes your personality or your personality starts reflecting on the things you have. And before that, you used to uh, collect motorcycles, which you still do. <laughs> well, I have a, a yes. A, before the cars, I kind of, I always rode a bike since I was 25 years old. And when I was 15, this is funny. When I was 15 years old, I told my father when he asked me what I wanted for my 15th birthday. I'm from Mexico, and I told him I want a motorcycle. So he told my mom that I wanted a motorcycle, and my mother drew a fair, and she said, you know, if you bring the bike, I'm gonna. Kick, leave the house or why don't you get a gun and kill them yourself so I never got a bike and I never spoke about owning a motorcycle here so when I came here in 96 um, you know I was able to uh, support myself I went to the dealer in 87 and I went uh, bought my own motorcycle without ever riding one and, and I've been riding motorcycles ever since so yeah I started buying one and then another one and, and then it became a habit and uh, at the same time, I do some leather work that, uh, for motorcycles and for cars, and I do leather tooling. And that kind of helped me to, you know, it got all click and to go into motorcycles and motorcycle seats and stuff. And then my latest, uh, uh, I guess, a tra uh, how do you call them, uh, attribute is that I start doing metal engraving. 
and uh, that's another thing that you know, it, uh, applies to motorcycles and to cars. A lot of road riders use uh, metal engraving and, and leather tooling. So that's kind of like the, the pattern I chose to go and I ride my bikes, I have the cars and I do a lot of other uh, uh, metal engraving and leather work for a lot of other fellas. And, and you're a man of many talents. Um, you've worked for many years in the computer industry. Um, I remember that you can even play guitar. Yes, I also play so. guitar. <laughs> yes, I, I do play guitar, but that's not one of my... Uh, uh, it's not, I can do it. I can follow people who play guitar. We can sing in different songs or whatever, but I'm not like, it's not my thing. So yeah, I, I had that uh, I, I ability. Remember, <laughs> I remember you told me a story. You went to a restaurant where uh, some people were singing and you had to get up and show them how to do it, how, how to do it the right <laughs> way. And you were singing, you were singing there or you were playing guitar or both? Uh, no, when I went there, I, we were actually, I, I got a guitar and I started playing with them and then I started singing. <laughs> singing is another thing that I also do. Sometimes I work at a community college and sometimes the kids bring uh, mariachis and then sometimes they want people to sing. And yeah. you know, a lot of the kids know me and so they come and get me at the computer lab where I work and say, hey, Luis, they are mariachi singing. So they asked me to sing and wow. I just sing Mexican, you know, mariachi songs and stuff. So, Very cool. So, so um, yeah, Luis is, is, uh, has many talents and one of the major talents you have is, is art. And I remember maybe 15 years ago you started uh, working with leather yeah. leather engraving and now you're doing metal which i showed at the beginning of the video a little sample yeah. i actually started doing leather when i was uh, like 15 years old when i was in mexico but i never did a lot as far as uh, you know i did it for me and never for anybody else but then when i started doing my motorcycle seats people that asked me who did your seats and stuff and that's how everything exploded from there you know from people seeing my stuff on my motorcycles i actually started doing motorcycle seats and then I started doing leather uh, leather wallets and other stuff and belts and whatever people wanted me to. So sometimes people come with a project and they tell me, hey, can you do this? And even though I don't know how to do it, but I was, uh, you know, my thing is like, get it done. So that's my attitude. So I always try to do whatever people want. And, and usually it's, it's pretty good. And you came up with uh, this symbol. Yeah, this is a phoenix and it has a meaning. You know, and, and that's my design. So you designed this, and uh, yeah, and I had it made for me. And it has my initials on it. So that's, that's kind that's of who like, I am. That's who I am. It's kind of like your uh, your brand, your Correct. your emblem, your your symbol. Yes, and, and it has a lot to do with my personal life because uh, uh, a phoenix is a is a bird that raises from the ashes. So through my life, uh, I've been uh, I have. A lot of personal, you know, divorce, get married, live in my car, uh, being homeless again, and then rise again, you know, go with my kids and, and stuff like that, different times. And I still, you know, every time in life, sometimes you fall, but you always have to get up. So that's the attitude of the phoenix. And it has five feathers because those are my five kids. So those are my five kids here. And then it has a shield in my initials in the middle. I don't know if you can see it. But what it means is like me, the phoenix, the shield means I'm protected, and then the initials, me, and there's a cross in the middle means by God. So it means uh, I am protected by God. That's what it means. And, and the shield, I, I had seen the shield earlier also. You made a version which looks like a, a warrior shield. Correct, correct. I just, uh, I made another version of the logo, just the, the shield and my initials, which is I'm protected by God. I use Very that also. Cool. And I saw some of your work, uh, some of your earlier work of, of leather was like you were making uh, custom-made uh, purses or wallets and wristbands and many different things, uh, saddles for motorcycles and of course seats because the seats are like made of rubber and they tear, tear up because of the sun and the weather mm -hmm. and a lot of people uh, want leather seats so you Correct. change you you install the leather you create a leather design custom made for the person that that they want a name yes. or a s symbol or a design 
Correct. And yeah, that's you, what I do. And you cover the seat with that leather. Yeah, sometimes people come to me because their seat has ripped. They're usually made out of vinyl and sometimes the seats are whole so they, you know, they, they tear and they come and ask me if I, they replace it uh, with leather and I ask them what kind of design they want and I see trying to make you know, get the style they want and the colors they want and, uh, and I try to do it for people. I think that's how I do my designs. And some of it is uh, hammered into the leather, some of it is burnt, some of it is colored and it's all done by hand. Correct, yeah, you can do tooling, which is uh, you use tools, you, you hammer the, the, the image on, onto the leather. Uh, sometimes you use a, a paragraph, which is a tool that heats up and, and you burn it onto uh, leather and you also have the, uh, uh, you know, uh, make the image they want and then uh, the colors, you can also just put color on the images or the surroundings or whatever the case may be. And you have, uh a lot of samples of your work on your website. I do have a uh, Facebook and Instagram, and L J Rodriguez. Uh, that's my Instagram and uh, my and my Facebook too. So if you ever really want to check it out, I have a uh, the shield with my initials on it. That's where I post most of my work. L L J Rodriguez. L J R O D R I G U E Z is your uh, handle on. Uh, Instagram, Facebook. And Facebook, yes. Very cool. I, I, and yeah, I've seen your work for many years, and it's it's really beautiful. It's thank really you. it's really unique. Well, thank you. I always try to, uh, as an artist, you always have to improve. You want to have that mentality of uh, today being better than you were last year. I don't try. I'm not ever try to be better than anybody else. I just tried to be better than I was last year or yesterday. And, and it's similar to like you started with motorcycles, like I remember you had a Honda, and then you went into uh, Harley Davidson's, and then you got a El Camino, then you got like two more of them, and then you <laughs> got into these cars, and yes. then so you, I, I, I do see that definitely that you're always improving, always learning. And then when it comes to your art, uh, you started with leather, and then from leather you've gone to metal, which is really super cool. Mm -hmm. And which is, uh, I'll just show this sample right here as an example uh, of your work. Uh, this is metal, and again, all done by hand. Yep. Uh, so can you tell? Tell us a little bit about the, the metal work that you Okay, so did. I can tell you real quick the process of the metal. It's uh, You get the piece of metal. Most of the motorcycle pieces are chrome, so the process is first you have to strip the chrome from the piece, and then you have to polish it. Once the piece is polished, I get it back, and then I do the engraving, I do the designing, I draw it, and then I do uh, the tooling, uh, the, the engraving with uh, some tools. And after the piece has been engraved, I take it back to the shop to get chrome. Once the part is chrome, I get it back and then the part is pretty, pretty much done. So that's uh, the pieces over there in the, the car, the bumper, that's how they were, they were made. Most of the time you're, move, you're making uh, for people in metal, what, what, are they, what are the kind of things that you're making? I saw some like names, some symbols. Some... Yeah, some people ask me to, most people want some flourishing, uh, you know, uh, Western, uh, the different designs, different styles, but that's pretty much what people want. Uh, I have some customers in Dubai who like to have the tribal designs, and that's pretty cool also, so I like doing tribal designs for people. And also some other people might say, you know, I, I want you to do my logo on the, uh, on the parts and I want a date from somebody's, you know, somebody's name, somebody's day, uh, you know, when they, somebody dies, they want in memory of or whatever. I just do whatever the customer wants. But I, uh, so I, I have also done some portraits on metal and they look okay. I think I just need more practice to get better, you know. The, the only way, mm -hmm. once you start doing something, is up unless you stop, but when this cost me pleasure, it's really rewarding to me, it made me feel good that I can do all these skills and all these beautiful things. And uh, you know, sometimes it's hard for me to 
<laughs> give it to back to the customers because they're so pretty. But I have to because I'm getting paid for it. But sometimes I do things for myself and I don't get paid and I just keep them and I just put them in my wallet. So it's like a, so it, it is exactly like a piece of art. It is li exactly it is like yeah, a it's painting. A, it's a fine art. And yeah, and, and uh, you've been, you have been commissioned to do certain art pieces and some other pieces you do on your own Correct. and and even the ones you commission you are commissioned to do sometimes is it is difficult to let it go because it's yes. your piece of art your your heart and soul is in it yes and because my i put my my love my heart and soul like you say uh, on every single piece i do uh, what i also do because i don't just do it for the money i do it for personal reward i feel, I feel really good uh, I keep in touch with people who own these pieces and we become friends, you know, I have people, friends all over the United States, some of them in Europe and also friends in Dubai and because, and I talk to them and stuff and I have met them because uh, I like keep being, keeping friends for, with people who have my pieces because I'm not only doing it for the money, I'm doing it because uh, it's part of me, it's a piece of me and it's my, my expression of, of, of how the world, you know, I, but I, my world. Uh, well, Luis, I want to thank you for uh, your many years of friendship, and uh, uh, you you are you are inspiring in so many ways. You know, especially as an artist. Yeah. So thank uh, you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I'm not better than anybody else. I'm just like everybody else running around in this wheel of life. But uh, I'm going to my own speed, and like I said, I'm not trying to be better than anybody else. I'm trying to be myself, better than myself. And if there's anybody out there who has uh, talents like uh, tattoos, or doing tattoos, or drawing, or even airbrushing, I have done some airbrush also, or just been, pursue your skills and, and get better at it and, and feel good about yourself. And just remember that, you know, some people who are better than you, and some people are worse than you. Everybody's in uh, just different stages on their, on their process. So it's not that you're better than them, they're not better than you. It's just that you have to spend more time in your skill, practicing the skill to become the person and, and the quality of work that you do. And if you keep doing it, you're gonna grow uh, better and better. Some people tell me, oh, you are a master. And to me personally, I cannot, uh, uh, I don't accept that because uh, I'm not a master. I'm just somebody who's learning. And I like to learn more and more different things every day. So I'm just growing my skill because that's, that's my path, that's the path I chose to have. So and, I've never give up. And, and I see you, um, you know, at, at any age, at, at every stage of your, of your life, I see you, I have seen you like reinventing yourself as a human being, re reinventing yourself as an artist in many different forms of art and always evolving. And that is really cool. Well, in life, uh, when I was 20, I was a certain way. When I was 30, I was a different way, 40s and 50s. I'm a 58-year-old man. I actually just about my, my birthday. But yes, life is about evolving. Just like uh, snakes grow out of the skin and uh, 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 lobsters grow out of the shells. We are, as, as human beings, we are the same. We don't see it because we're used to people. And actually, our skin sheds every day, which is pretty much we're changing constantly. So uh, as we get older, you know, we get wiser and we we get more mature. We see things different. Uh, we start our taste uh, taste buds pretty much are change also, and we start liking things that we we start pretty much showing our the things that we like. Uh, we have liked for a long time. Like me, I like motorcycles when I was 15 years old, but I never got into one until I was in my 20s. But uh, that's something that I, I wanted to express myself. You know, I want to express for all your thing, all your feelings, your emotions from inside. You start expressing it by the things you are, by the clothes you wear, by the way you look, by how you act. Uh, you start getting buying things that, that reflect your personality. So yes, you always changing. And another thing I noticed about you is like you're always like enjoying life. You know, like you're like. Uh, always looking for the sweetness, the the enjoyment from many different aspects of life. Yes, uh, yes, you have to enjoy life to be uh, to be happy. I mean, our mission here is to be happy. 
Nobody's gonna make us happy by ourselves. No material things are gonna make us happy by ourselves. Actually, I buy my things because I'm happy, and I like enjoying my things because I that I buy because I'm happy. So it's not the other way around. And yes, you know, my kids, uh, like when I, when, for instance, when I was uh, a father, my kids were little, they grew, now they're on their own. Now I got more time for me to uh, explore what I want, what I like, what makes me happy. And, uh, you know, so yeah, I always trying to get that next high. Not, uh, I don't do drugs, don't smoke, never drink in my life. But I mean, the other uh, on pleasure, on, on being happy in your life. Be at peace with yourself and be nice and kind to people who are around you and, and to always try to be helpful to somebody who needs help. Yeah. Well, uh, Luis, thank you so much again. Is oh, there, thank you. Is there anything else you want to say in closing? No, uh, I've just, uh, I guess I can tell everybody, I just wish everybody health. And that's very important to keep your health. If you have health, you can work for anything you want. And always have a goal in your life. It is very important for you to have a goal in your life. What is it? I don't know. Maybe you don't know. Maybe I don't know. Nobody knows. But you have to look for it. And as long as you keep searching for what makes you happy in your life, and you have a goal, you work towards a goal, you're going to achieve it at one point. And once you get there, you're going to have another goal, and you are going to pursue it. And it's going to be so on and so forth. That's why we keep changing. So as long as you have goals in your life and be nice to people and are healthy, then you're going to be okay. So good luck to all of you, and thank you for listening. Uh, I'm not a... a professional I don't speak to people or I actually talk very little but they asked me to interview me so I said yeah sure why not you know maybe yeah, somebody gets a little bit uh, positive from this video and I wish you well okay well, thank you for the for the opportunity yeah thank you Luis and and for um, any viewers um, if you have any questions comments you can post them in the comment section and check out uh, the work, the awesome, amazing work that Luis does um, on his Facebook and Instagram. It is LJ, like Luis Jaime, LJ Rodriguez, R O D R I G U E Z, on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you, Luis. Thank you. All right. Take care, guys. Bye bye. <laughs> One last shot of your beautiful car.